So guys, welcome to day four on production for Well of Cabal. So I'll introduce my fabulous guests from left to right. We have the amazing director himself, Chris Sanders. Hey guys. We've got one of our main stars playing Reverend Peter James, the infamous John Paul Gates. Hello. And our wonderful, absolutely top-notch DOP, Josh Carr. Welcome. So Does he get more money? <laughs> I don't get any money at all. I'm not being paid. What do you think this is? I'm doing this for the love, mate. Look at that. Yeah. So, just a few questions on like uh, day three and four, since we're doing a combined vlog for this one. A little bit of a special. Uh, my first question is going to go to you, you, Chris. So, we would like to know your thoughts on Derek Nelson's and Antonia. I hope you pronounced the last name. Anybody know? Uh, Will Ends. Will Ends. Sorry, Antonio, if you are watching this, I need a little bit of assistance with that. Antonia, you all right? Have a peer through for me, darling. Hey, are, hey, are. Hello, darling, you all right? Yeah, not bad, you. Yeah, not bad, yeah. Hey, bugger off now, you can go back out. Bye, bye. Antonio Willens, on screen chemistry and performance thus far. When I first met Derek, um, very good chat over Zoom, and then we got to know each other. Because what I like to do when I'm casting, I like to have a good think about the chemistry between all the actors involved. Um, that can be a long process, so I like to give that a lot of thought. Um, so we finally met up with Derek and Antonia. And we sat down, we had a chat, and uh, there was already that, that chemistry. Derek's a really sweet guy. Any further comments from you, Mr. DOP? No, I mean, I, I've got to I say, I hadn't, I wasn't part of the casting process um, for the two, but. Not part of the cast. No, <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. But just, you know, having Does a chat. Does it exist? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> just having a chat with the, with the guys and seeing how they're working um, off camera, the chemistry is definitely there, and that's what you like to see. It can always be a bit awkward with, um, you know, two characters that are meant to have a good chemistry on screen. When they're not working well together off camera, we a few flags, but you know, the guys are really friendly with each other and you know having a nice chat, and that's good. That's what we like to see. Yeah, we posted some pics on Facebook as well. All the smiles were natural, like just really. You can tell they're just genuinely happy to be there and uh, having a great time, good laugh. So yeah, that's good. That's a great summary. I firmly agree with those comments. Um, I'll direct this again to both Chris and Josh. So in regards to obviously day three's early issues with our sound recording, obviously we had all the issues with the, the harvesters and workmen. We you know, able just to hear it on this video. Yeah, yeah, as yeah, you can yeah. tell, we're, we're yeah, not we're in an isolated area in Leicestershire. We're, we're surrounded by combine harvesters. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, given those issues, um, how do you think the team dealt in resolving and adapting to those issues? We did it situation? very well. We, um, like I said, we turned up on day three yeah. uh, for the first exterior shot in the graveyard behind us, actually. That little, little graveyard. Yeah, but but there was um, like I said, the combine harvesters were out. There were guys um, doing some building work down the road. Um, that's just one of the things you have to deal with. So we just uh, we adapted the script. Um, we did a little exterior shot. Then went inside and uh, we sat down. We had a chat. We improvised. Um, and it worked really well. The scene went really smoothly. I was really really happy with it. Um, I think it worked better than what we had originally. And sometimes that's where the magic happens. When something unexpected happens. Yeah, we're all creative people working in a fast-paced, you know, fluid creative industry. So that's what we do. You know, we, we adapt and we crack on with it, and um, we overcome any any hurdles that you know, come our way. And that's what we've done. And now day four, we're ahead on schedule. Uh, that's day tomorrow. Looking forward to it. And then we're off to Devon. Fantastic. Yeah, off so, to Devon. Yeah. yeah, I any mean, just, comments, just building on on Chris's point. You know, it's so nice to see that. You know, when we when we're in those scenarios, it's great to have the cast and the crew behind us. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's that's definitely what happened. You know, we got inside, 
everyone mucked together, we you know we got into the scripts, we had a look at what's going on, and you know we blocked a scene that yeah, like Chris said, I think works better uh, in in the film than than what we originally had. So you, you couldn't ask for better collaboration with the cast and the crew. On and also, point. sorry, sorry, mate, yeah, going on from that, the location we've got at the moment is beautiful, beautiful church. Um, you can't fail because we're surrounded by these beautiful stained glass windows, um, the roof, the, the architecture, and the old books, these beautiful old Bibles. You open them. And it's Every piece just sort of has yeah, come together very, very well. Yeah, like, you know, it's just, um, it's just a really great setting location. So it's and you've really got the spotting. setup, you've got the right casting crew, like, so you've got all those great Absolutely, creative heads yeah. together. And I just feel really energised because it's, I come here and it's reminiscent of the old Hammer and Amicus Tigon film that we watched as a kid. So it inspires me. Um, I just feel really blessed to be doing this. I'm here, you know, it's the middle of the spot, end, end of summer. We're shooting a horror film with a bunch of creatives and we're off to Devon. I mean, doesn't get any better than that for me, so yeah, fantastic. Fantastic stuff, right. I think that answers our questions on day three, so we'll move on to obviously today's antics. Uh, um, so, John Paul gets this question uh, directed to yourself, sir. Would you like, to give, us 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 that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. like to give us your thoughts mm -hmm. on working with the wonderful screen queen herself, Danny Thompson? Oh, yes, yeah, no, beautiful lady actually. Um, funny enough, uh, uh, we'd actually worked on a couple of productions before this, although we'd not actually exchanged diatribe, you know. Um, and um, yeah, no, I mean, she's very, very professional. Um, and um, of course, extremely sexy. So there wasn't really much acting on my part, you know, uh, because I think any man in their right mind uh, would fancy her. So. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, and, and she's also very still, um, which I, I suppose for someone with, because of her background, screen queen, page three, etc., etc., you have you know these preconceptions of well, can they really act? But actually, she delivered, and you know, she's and and she gives you enough so that you feel as though you're not overacting, you know what I mean, to compensate for that. Whereas some actresses who come from that kind of background, you feel as though you're over-projecting to compensate. You that think Danny's sense. experience certainly has um, has you on the right levels of exactly what we needed yeah. to help kind of balance your performance. Yeah, totally, totally. And, um, you know, there's, there's, and when you see it, there's an interesting play between the two. Um, and you know we had to change because in the original script um, you thought it would make it more interesting to change it slightly. Yeah. Uh, so you had to change the emphasis, and it worked actually better. Yeah, we yeah. found um, in the original script it was more a case of the the Reverend had gone up into the galley to uh, have a cheeky cigar and, and relax, and um, this this uh, character had almost pounced on him to um, let her know. You know, let him know that she had these these feelings um, but what we did is because it's Danny we wanted to do something really cool we shot a really nice sexy uh, establishing shot for Danny as she's walking down the aisle and so we've got this nice pink lusty smoke behind her and um, we thought it would be nice to change the emphasis of that scene so we see a bit more of, uh, of the, the, the uh, reverend you know almost gawking in amusement at, at this beautiful woman that's coming towards her. Yeah. 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 Certainly, yeah. Certainly utilising Danny's wow factor. Exactly, exactly. And, and I think that for us puts more of an emphasis and a, and a, and a big punch as to why Danny's there and, yeah. and what a great casting she is. Hmm. Any further thoughts from you, Chris, on Danny's casting and performance? Um, just following on from what JP, very, very professional, uh, really sweet lady, um, came in, knew her lines, Marks, and that was it. You can't ask for more, and she did a No, nothing more from a, a true professional. Certainly can't disagree with any of those comments. Um, it's just a bit of an open air question as well. What's been the most, do we find, challenging point of production thus far this week? How was that for you, Jason? I think the performances were great. We'll have to see how it goes. But I think at the Oscars, they'll they'll get a round of applause for that for sure. Certain. Um, 
I think it's about time Sam Recordis got a, a good rap and Sam Recordis, yeah. Sam Recordis on the show is, I've got to say, he's one of the best Sam Recordis I've ever met. <laughs> he's done a great job under difficult circumstances. Um, but the I mean, working with these two is definitely a difficult circumstance. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wasn't going to say idiots. Anything, <laughs> We're so close to the main road. Like I said, we're surrounded by combine harvesters and you know, tractors and things like that. I mean, obviously, initially, when you look at this location, you would initially think, obviously, yeah, quite remote. That's where, that's where I came in. It's the most remote village in the whole of, like, of Rutland. Um, <laughs> it's like it, it didn't turn out to be the case. Yeah, it is what it is, you know, but, you know, we've got a beautiful church, uh, and we've worked around it, and like I said, we're ahead of schedule. And uh, we're smashing it, so yeah. So yeah, big credit to all the team on that in that Are regard. We're looking so. forward to Devon. By the way. Yeah, exactly. Well, Devon's going to be going to be a fun time. Yeah. Uh, and I going think actually, to, just to add to that, I think we should probably you know talk to Devon City Council. Maybe you can become a brand ambassador because you mentioned Devon. Yeah. On <laughs> so many times. You know, so many so times. So maybe maybe he's already got us. Yeah. Yeah, something on Maybe there's some underlying facts. Yeah. 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 We've always been expecting Mr. Sanders to pull something out of the bag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just the final open air question for you, gentlemen. Uh, how excited are you going into the final day of this week of shooting oh. principal photography on Black Compass's next horror feature film, Werewolf Cabal? Well, I'm extremely excited yeah. because You're in it. it's my day off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. It's quiet. A little too quiet. Fantastic! <laughs> and they have rest. No rest for the uh, wicked, they yeah, say. JP but had a, JP had a bit of a scare last night, didn't he? Oh, yes. Should we get to talk about that here? Okay. William uh, uh, Malone. Uh, more than welcome to tell the viewers. I was going to say, looking forward to tomorrow. I mean, it's we can't talk too much about it, but we've had this really exciting um, transformation sequence that we've been working on. I won't share too many details about it, but yeah, definitely um, a centerpiece of the film and something yeah. that we're all really excited to see when it's finally edited, and this is kind of the the final result of that transformation sequence. It's the first time on screen that we we really see the, the wolf in its full glory, yeah. and um, you know it's the first. Uh, and, real and, and, and we've actually, you know, a lot of these, a lot of horror films, they shy away from showing the real world. Yeah. Maybe for budget reasons. Um, you know, we haven't got a, ma a huge budget, but we have really pushed the boat out. We want, we don't want to shortchange the audience. We've got a real werewolf. And it's not, you know, it's not, it's, it's an interesting, it's, real well, well, it's, indeed. it's yeah. not like you stand, it's, chain, it's cha favorite. chained up in the back yeah. actually, we're just uh, yeah. it's feeding on one, one or two runners in. It's the kind of werewolf that, we haven't, I, I can't think of I've seen a werewolf quite like what we've got and that's what's nice, it's, it's something unique and, and a bit different which is, which is great yeah. and something to definitely be excited about as an audience member I've got to say. Final comments, gentlemen. Anything else you'd like to add? Plug away at? Looks that we all rounded off very well. Yeah, it's, it's going really well. Getting really into it now. I think all the cast and crew is fully invested and sold on, on the project, and that only helps to improve the quality of the final product. So, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the deployment. Great. I'll just uh, leave it on that with those comments. So, a big thank you to director Chris Sanders, star John Paul Gates. Director of Photography Josh Carr for all their comments and their questions. Hope that that's giving you all some better insight as to what we're filming here. And we hope you're just excited as all we are to see the final product of Werewolf Cabal. Thank you guys, and like always, we'll see you in the sequel. Bye for now. Yeah.